Thank you very much. Let's get seated, please. I want to specially give glory to God for this 10th convocation ceremony of Landmark University. It all looks like yesterday, but here we are today to the glory of God. One more time, help me give the Lord a big hand of praise. My joy is manifold. One, the mission and the vision has continued to speak. The specialized model of education we had as a dream and the beginning is speaking around the world today. To God alone, one more time, be all the glory. <laughs> to have graduates of this institution becoming employers of labor while we are still alive, to God alone, be all the glory. <laughs> to have them scaling new heights, becoming outstanding academics, around the world, to God again be all the glory. Let me also welcome every one of us to this convocation ceremony, particularly our royal fathers, beginning from the Olomo of Omara, and all the others in my environment who are here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for honoring the Lord with your presence. And thank you for hosting this university and this community without any stress. The Lord bless and reward every one of you in Jesus' name. I want to also appreciate all our friends, our university friends that have come from far and near, um, representing their various institutions for taking time to come. Be blessed also in Jesus' name. I've tried to tie to standing upon all existing protocols. My speech today as the type of education we need in Africa. It's going to be a lot of food for thought. And I want both the graduating class and all our friends that are here today to please let's put our thinking cap on and chart the way forward for this great continent the type of education we need in Africa. No one ever arrives at a future he cannot see. And no one arrives at a future is not prepared for. Africa is not where she is because she's black, but largely because she's blind. The what will happen will happen mentality is what has brought Africa to where she is today. We don't wait to see problems solved. We take steps to solve problems. Someone has said you are not a failure until you look for who to blame for it. Interestingly, our mission as a university, among others, is to see the lost glory of Africa restored. You check through our mission statements, check through the vision. The vision. One of our core mission for existence is to see Africa's glory recovered. I believe finding indigenous solutions is the only way forward for any community of people. This is because man is absolutely responsible for the outcome of his life. Absolutely responsible for the outcome of his life. Let's have some flashback. Our forefathers solved their problems brazenly without a school system in place. Well, here we are today with chains of degrees, a proof of how intelligent we are as a people, yet with not much impact on society. 
some 25 years ago and I took a study on the human brain. And to my amazement, the human brain is the same for all races, black or white or yellow. And this applies to both male and female. The brain is said to have 100 billion neurons with over 100 trillion connections. Each neuron is a little learning center capable of storing knowledge. But each neuron desires to be fed with vital information to be healthy enough to perform at peak and optimum levels, thereby provoking creativity. If we fail to feed and exercise the muscles of the brain through the art of peak learning and solution-driven reasoning, it will sag and become flabby, just like the muscles of a weak body that's not exercised. As commonly said, man is said to be operating only 5% of the rated capacity of the human brain, 5%. I believe our problem in this part of the world lies in the lack of adequate engagement of this natural endowment, which is largely responsible for where we are today. Every great nation, without exception, is a function of valuable, of the valuable contributions of individuals and organizations within our domain. A developed people is what results in a developed nation but was responsible for the pitiable state of the black man. Simply, lack of adequate capacity utilization of this natural endowment. The human brain, the human brain has intuitive capacity to innovate, invent, and create if properly engaged. Roll on, please. According to Adadevo, one of those great academics in our continent, he has said, Africa today is an ego that is yet to soar. She needs to tell herself, she's an ego. We belong to the sky. Every imagination that places Africa in a lower category in relation to other groups, other, other people, shall be replaced with, a new, th with new thoughts that are that see Africa in the center stage in global development. It's all about mentality. Until we become intellectually innovative and creative, our situation may as well remain with us for life. Landmark University and Afrocentric University with a burning passion for a new Africa. Burning passion for a new Africa. Carry on, please. Without a departure, arrival at one's destination is not in view. If you are not willing to lose sight of the shore, you can't discover new islands. And that informs our founding philosophy in this university, which describes this assertion in unmistakable terms. A departure from form to skill. A departure from just theoretical knowledge to empowerment. A departure from figures to future building. A departure from legalism to realism. A departure from points to facts. A departure from mathematics to life matics. We need to come down to life applicable engagement of this versatile resource that we carry. This departure philosophy has made our products unique in every way. This institution today produces one of the most employable uh, graduates and some of the most employable graduates in Nigeria today. In Landmark University, we desire not just a diagnosis of the problem, but an action plan that turns rhetorics into positive experience. We are committed to giving life applicable education to a new generation of leaders by planting their skill on the elevated platform of our core values, character learning, character learning. No matter where skill takes you, only character can sustain you there. 
the crisis in our country today is character crisis, nothing else. Grab all grabbable, eat all eatable, including poison. Our custom big programs, which includes total man concept, entrepreneurial development studies, agropreneurship, towards a total graduate, are unique to us. The impact has been awesome over the years. They constitute the man-child training model of Landmark University. Our mission is to turn men out of children. And I'm glad all the parents who are here, you know something has taken place in the life of your sons and daughters. The guardians here will have evidence everywhere that something has turned out of your wards and students, no doubt. So my challenge to Africans in the knowledge industry is to come awake and begin to chart the way forward by developing learning modules geared towards the path of a new Africa. We have a unique problem. My friend, the white man can solve this problem. No, there's enough problem to face. Hey, people not conscious of their history hardly make history. We are not, we are not dummies. Colonial Macedonia means us on the tree. We live like this today as a people without history. They want to write our history for us, the way they see it. Time to awake. Push on, please. Push on, please. This is because the history of the outstanding feats of our forefathers were either not documented or considered to lack merit. By who? We have been victims of oral history, which is largely void of facts and figures, of the gallant feats of our ancestors, but rather full of fictions. For instance, before the advent of colonial masters, who taught our forefathers the art of farming? If they were not eating, would they meet anybody when they came? Who helped them to discover what is edible? Was there a laboratory? Who taught them how to prepare their meals? Who taught them the planting season for every crop? Who taught them the technicalities involved in childbearing and children delivery or child care delivery? Yet they understood what to do at childbirth and they knew how to care both for the baby and the young mother. Our forefathers maintained their territorial integrity, constructed their own weapons of war, designed their own textile mills. They were not wearing leaves. They had their own former judicial system and operated same efficiently. They exhibited self-actualization through self-determination. They were self-reliant and commanded loss of dignity in all their endeavors. Our forefathers were surely big wigs. They were not in France. As I've said earlier, without a sense of history, no man really makes history. We are people with very rich history. We need to come awake to that. We carry high level intelligent questions, unutilized, sold out. It's time to recover. Modern day facts of history also attest to this. Black people built the first civilization. What? Oh, yeah, we did. History asserts that black people built the pyramids of Egypt with archaeological discoveries and mummies that date back over 3,000 BC. Sure, black people first developed architecture, geometry, and astrology. Greek historians, artists, and mathematicians went to Egypt for their education between 2,800 BC and 2,400 BC, 500 years. The Greek passed civilization to Romans. The Romans could not retain it, a lot of wickedness. And later, Europe was plunged into the Dark Ages. Another set of Africans, known as the Moors from North Africa, moved to Spain in 711 AD and the civilized Europe again. We, are, we have rich history. Man is created to solve his own problems wherever he's planted. As we know, trees do not travel 
and yet they have survived for centuries. In the same vein, animals do not need to travel. They don't have visas. Only man travels the world looking for solutions. Instead of confronting them where he is and bringing solutions as our forefathers did. I call you food for thought and I'm sure we are thinking along. To the graduating students, the world is looking, it's not looking for storytellers or entertainers, but for problem solvers. Identify the problem you are out to solve. Go for it. Money is not everything. Money, money can mess up any destiny. Sir. Money can mess up any destiny. I was on 300 naira per month as the president and founder of our mission. That's how we could afford. We've never borrowed in this world. But is that where we are today? Get to know where you belong. Stay on there. Stick to it. The future is bright for problem solvers, not for consumers. Problems everywhere implies opportunities everywhere. Moreover, the profit of the art is for all. The king himself is served by the faith. Everybody has a profitable part to play by being contributive at its level per time. Let me at this juncture congratulate all our parents and guardians, the parents and guardians of our graduates of today, because you choose to give us your words, sons and daughters, access to the best form of education available in this country today. And um, may you live to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Young people, we are delivering, releasing you as problem solvers. Find a problem to solve. A little here and a little there will change the story of Africa. Beginning from your community, beginning from your home base, beginning from your workplace. Everybody has a part to play to create a new Africa that is so much needed today. I've said it before, a time is here when there'll be no country to run into. Every country will have enough problem to cope with. They'll be sending people back to where they came from because everyone is under becoming a, a, a victim of the economic collapse of the entire world. May you be part of those solution providers as you step out of here. Now, Giants don't give back to dwarfs. Dwarfs don't give back to giants. You can't be coming from a source that you are coming from and end up as a mediocre if you will take responsibility. My prayers are closed that you receive grace to take responsibility over your life and not be a crying baby on your mother's lap, but a blessing instead. My prayer again is that none of you we have your life cut short. Yeah. None of your parents will bury any of you. Yeah. You fulfill destiny in grand styles. Yeah. Every agent of the devil seeking your heart it will be hot in your place. Yeah. Everyone that hates to see you soar will go down for you. Yeah. And my prayer is that you take responsibility for integrity, for probity, for character, and keep building capacity. Even the sky will not be your limit. Once again, thank you for listening, and God bless you.